Let's put lightning in a bottle. But in a safe way, with a Leyden jar. Because nothing bad has ever happened with electricity. Hey, good to see you. Let's get straight to it. We're going to be dealing with thousands of volts of electricity today. So make sure you know what you're doing and do not play with electricity. Does it still count as playing if we take the proper precautions? While doing the research for this, I was really trying to get a handle on what lightning was because we're going to be dealing with that. Then it struck me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I died. <laughs> As long as we respect the power, it should be fine. But we did forget one thing. Yeah, put on your glasses. <laughs> Much better. Make sure you subscribe for weekly experiments and random facts. Today we're going to be making a capacitor, storing electricity in plastic water bottles. And we'll be using static electricity to charge it. First off, we're going to make a very simple, inefficient Leyden jar that can only hold maybe mm, 10,000 volts. And then we're going to test it on ourselves. Yeah! <laughs> we are straying dangerously close to playing with electricity. <sighs> Not at all. The amps are going to be so incredibly small that there's really no danger whatsoever. After we build a more efficient design, that's when we start using their respect. Okay. I sense trust issues. Let's get everything ready. There are a lot of different ways to make a Leyden jar. We will be using plastic bottles, aluminum foil, and salt water. And some stainless steel screws to use as screws. Yes. We also are going to be charging it with a PVC pipe and just a normal cotton cloth. You could use paper towel or wool if you wanted, but it doesn't really matter. Unfortunately, tangy tangerine lime fizzy no-name brand pop <laughs> is not conductive. So we do need to empty it out and fill it with salt water. Make sure you remove the label from the bottle. The thinner the insulating material is, in this case the plastic bottle, the more efficient the Leyden jar will become. Next, rinse out the bottle so that it's clean on the inside. To start, we need to wrap the outside of the bottle in aluminum foil keeping in mind to keep the top down around two inches from the top and about the same from the bottom. Then fill the bottle with water and add some salt. The amount of salt doesn't really matter, just add between a bit and a bunch. Next, we are going to punch a screw through the bottle cap. When you put the bottle cap back on, make sure that the bottom of the screw is in the water. Now that we've built our jar, let's get zapping. We will see about that. So to begin with, hold the cloth in one hand and the pipe in the other, and then run the pipe through the cloth like so. By doing so, you're storing negative charge in the PVC pipe and positive charge in the cloth. Then, by running the pipe past the screw, you'll pass the negative charge into the screw and into the salt water. The more times you pass the pipe by while rubbing it through the cloth, the stronger the charge becomes in the salt water. Now, if I remember correctly, the negative charge on the inside will want to repel the electrons on the outside foil. So if we did this correctly, we should get two little zaps. One when we touch the outside foil as the electrons flee. Oh, there we go. That was a good one. <laughs> and one when we connect the two points and the bottle evens itself out. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start small. Only three charges. Fine, but I don't expect much of a result. One, two, three. The reason why we're taking turns, one touching the foil and the other one touching, making the connection, is because when I touch the foil, I get that spark, but now I am positively charged. So if I were to touch that, the shock would be much less. Yep. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> good. Let's step it up. Five charges. Okay, here we go. Like, can you make the connection this time? Sure. Ooh, yep. Next. Okay. Whew. Okay, that was just five. Wow. Pretty really bad. <laughs> Why do these sparks shock us? <laughs> because they don't know how to conduct themselves. <laughs> Next up, ten charges. But Eliana is wussing out. <laughs> so I guess it's all on me. <laughs> Okay. 
There's, there we go. There's Are ten. Sure this okay. Is dangerous levels. No. Okay. I'll do it. Ooh, ooh, ah, you got me. <laughs> what? So that shock <laughs> went through me into my mic, into the camera, back through the mic, and into her mic, and shocked her right on the neck. I'm. Hmm. <laughs> Um, okay, I'm gonna take my mic off just so we don't break anything delicate. Um. <laughs> now I'm positively charged, so I'm going to just ground myself out here by touching this grounded wire. So now I'm not positively charged anymore. Ooh, ooh, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Ooh, let's do that again. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna try ten again. Let me know in the comments if you want Eliana to do it next. <laughs> no. Okay, so we're gonna try this again. <laughs> My mic is still tingling from the first one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now we do this again. Ooh, yikes. <laughs> yeah. Woo! <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Ten charges is strong enough for me. I am literally feeling a resistance to touching that screw, even though I know there's no charge there because my brain knows that that screw causes me pain and it's trying to protect me. And I have to overcome that stupid brain. <laughs> so let's make this better. What can we improve? Well, for starters, we need to get rid of the sharp metal edges that are around the screw. Every ridge is an opportunity for the charge to be dispersed into the air. Luckily, I brought along some ping pong balls. Let's wrap them in foil and secure it to the screw. As you wrap the ping pong ball in foil, make sure you try to smooth it out as best you can. The smoother it is, the better it's going to be. Next, I think the foil around the bottle was a bit too loose before. I brought some foil tape to wrap it in to ensure a tight fitting connection. We will also add a strip of foil to the inside of the screw so there is more surface area in the salt water. Let's connect the foil on the outside of the Leyden jar to the grounding wire that I set up before. We will also connect my hand to the ground wire as well. So now we have the foil on the bottle grounded out. We also have my hand grounded out as well. So that means that when I'm charging up the PVC pipe, this cloth, as it becomes positively charged, is pulling electrons through the ground into my hand and then into the cloth, allowing me to charge the pipe even more. I certainly do not feel comfortable touching this. No, neither do I, and that's saying something. So, <laughs> what we're going to do is we've actually made another ping pong ball on a screw covered in aluminum foil, and we will use this as our connection point so that the sparks will jump from ball to ball. Charge it up and let's make some lightning. Okay, we'll make all the connections secure. Good, all right. Are you ready? Oh, cool. So that was 10 charges and that looked like it was about one kilovolt of electricity. We'll do it again, except for this time with 20. I did just finally get rid of my nasty static electricity. I'm ecstatic about it. <laughs> Ready? That's cool. That's really cool. So it's actually creating a lightning bolt about an eighth of an inch away. So that was only with 20 charges. Let's bump it up to 50. <laughs> so that jumped about a half inch away, which means that that with 50 charges would be about 15 kilovolts of electricity charged inside of this bottle. That's 15,000 volts. That's really cool. Yeah. All right, now let's do 100. When we watch that, 
Let me explain what is happening. A capacitor is any two electric conductors placed close to each other with some sort of electrical isolator in between them. In our case, the conductors are salt water and the foil. The isolator is the plastic bottle. The capacitor stores energy in the form of electric fields. If there is a way to place a charge on one side, the other side will attract the opposite charge if given a path. That's why it gives a shock when we touch the foil if we don't ground it out. We just gave it a path to become opposite charge. As soon as you get close to connecting the two sides of the capacitor, the two electric fields create an ionized conductive channel through the air, creating light and sound. Super cool stuff. Thanks for watching, you guys, and remember, stay safe. We have new videos coming out every week, and stay tuned, because bloopers are coming up. See you! <laughs> Just you come on. <laughs> Judging by my own subjective opinion, that looked like about one kilovolt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs>